How do you do? This is Steven, and I'm back. And this time, I want to speak with you for a quick moment about a article I found in reference to Ayumi Hamasaki. And this article was published by the let's see, StraightTimes.com. <clears throat> I believe it's like a newspaper in Singapore. <clears throat> but yeah, the title of the article is Ayumi Hamasaki regrets dropping out of school semicolon or actually colon sorry five things to know about the Japanese pop star alright uh, so what I'm gonna do is read the article and give my opinions you know ain't nothing new there alright so here we go Japanese pop star Ayumi Hamasaki has never failed to surprise her fans both on and off stage okay so yeah I can agree with that I think Ayumi I think, like, in her personal life, she might be a bit, like, um, vanilla, though. <clears throat> but I could be wrong, but whatever. Let's see. Next. She said at a press conference in Singapore on Friday that she regrets dropping out of high school. Oh, yeah, and by the way, this article is a bit dated. It's from October of 2014, so it's not the most, like, um, like current news topic. But nevertheless, I thought it was interesting. <clears throat> So that's why we're here. All right. So again, she said at a press conference in Singapore on Friday that she regrets dropping out of school. Oh, wow. So I'm happy that Ayumi says that she regrets dropping out of school. And I'm happy because I don't, because I think that, <clears throat> you know, if she says, oh, yeah, it's cool. I'm glad I dropped out of school. Then it might be like bad for the youth. And like, I know that. People, particularly entertainers, don't want to be role models, but in a sense, at least to an extent, you are kind of a role model, even if you don't want to be. You know, and I'm not saying that she should totally just live her life for other people, but on the flip side, I don't. I just think that she should be, you know, somewhat of a guide or help somewhat guide people. Or at least just not say that, you know, dropping out of high school is cool, basically. So, yeah, I'm glad that she says she regrets dropping out of school. Did she ever go back and get a GED or whatever Japanese people call it? <clears throat> All right, on to the next. Quote, unquote, I was kind of a tomboy, and I like to be alone. I was a strange kid. I'm not sure if you guys know, but I quit high school early said the 36-year-old who is here to perform at J Japanese Music and Fashion Festival A Nation on Saturday. Alright, so I didn't know that Ayumi was a tomboy and that she enjoyed being alone. I didn't think she was a strange kid. I don't really know her as a kid, though. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't know she dropped out of high school. Um, I don't know how I know that, though. You know, I'm not like a super Ayumi Hamasaki stan. Um, but I guess I just read that somewhere. And I've mentioned it in some of the videos that I've made about Ayumi Hamasaki. You know. And I think she has done extremely well for a high school dropout. You know. So it's like. Oftentimes it's like. Just because you're in certain circumstances. It doesn't determine your future totally. You know. Alright. Next. Um, all right, next. <laughs> That's really one of my regrets. I want to say to all students out there, enjoy your time in school and do not give up, she added. So she just, like, you know, giving a quick little message to the youth saying, you know, don't give up and just enjoy the time. Because at the end, it's just really a, a moment in time, you know? And I can understand why some people might want to drop out, you know, because they just feel like what they're learning isn't really relevant to their life or their circumstances, you know. But, you know, when all is said and done, you are doing yourself a disservice to drop out of high school, I think, personally. Because society, like, it's really tough, you know. Realistically, you will have to get a job 
you know. <clears throat> and I know some people can kind of, you know, work something and kind of hustle something on their own, but not everyone's like that, though. So I think having a high school diploma helps you kind of like um, gain access to certain resources that are not available, or at least is the prerequisite to doing something to help you gain access. Like, say, go to the army, well, go to the military, or go to college, or go to trade school, or something, you know? All right, um, let's see. Um, next, here are five other things to know about Hamasaki. Uh, they probably should just call her Ayumi. All right, number one, she is hailed as the Empress of J-pop. I already knew that. Let's see. Way before Lady Gaga stunned everyone with a hit by the same name, Poker Face was I was I'm gonna say Ayumi was Ayumi's debut single when she broke into the scene in April 1998 at the tender age of 20. All right, so before Lady Guy was all like, blah, 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 poker face, blah, 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 Ayumi was all like, blah, 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 poker face, blah, 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 blah. All right, her first album, a song for XX, perched at the top of Japanese music chart, Oricon, for five weeks, while her sophomore effort, Love Peers, also topped the charts. And she released both of these the same year. These were both released in 1999? Really? You can do that? Alright, um, let's see. Next. Since then, she has received, well, she has released one, let's see, she has released 51 singles, sold more than 50 million albums, and is widely regarded as Japanese pop's reigning queen with the most number one singles of any female solo artist. Go ahead, Ayumi. Yep, Ayumi hold them records, I'm telling you. <clears throat> best-selling solo artist and got the string of number one hits you know the most number one hits by female artists you know let's see and it seems like IU as she is known to her fans is not about to stop anytime soon with the release of her 15th studio album colors in July of this year and again like I said this article is dated <clears throat> all right let's see she told the Straight Times Life in a recent email interview, quote unquote, I can't picture my life or I can't picture a life without music. That's how much I love it. I love songs. I love singing. All right. So Ayumi loves her career. Yeah, it's good that you love your career. All right. <clears throat> Number two of the five things to know about Ayumi Hamasaki. Or five other things to know about Ayumi Hamasaki. She is deaf, or deaf in one ear. I already knew that. I don't know which ear, though. All right, so maybe they'll say it. In 2008, the singer announced on her website ahead of an Asian tour that she has lost all hearing in her left ear. Writing that her left ear doesn't work anymore due to an inoperable condition she added that she does not intend to give up singing quote unquote i won't stop i won't make excuses as a professional i would like to deliver the best performance for everyone she wrote so you know basically she has had some personal struggles and setbacks in her life and i hope I heard she is supposed to be going deaf in her other ear too, so I'm hoping she is taking the necessary precautions, you know, and preventative measures to make sure she does not go deaf in her other ear because she is a musical artist and having ears really helps that, you know. Let's see. Next, oh, let's see. Next. It is believed that her condition could be tinnitus, a ringing in the ear that can be caused by constant exposure to excessive or loud noises, reported AFP. Tinnitus is the same condition that afflicted famous deaf German composer Lud 
Wig Van Beethoven. Yeah, um, that is true. Um, they do say that um, I think Beethoven was dead. <clears throat> so I guess you can't have a music career um, being dead. I don't think it's the easiest thing to do, and I don't recommend you trying to go down that path. But if you have to, then hey, there you go. Someone has paved the way for you, I mean. Um, <clears throat> um, but, you know, in regards to tinnitus, um, that whole ringing in the ear, um, I've had that happen to me when I've have attended some concerts. You know, I've had the ringing in the ear for maybe like a couple of hours if not even almost like 24 hours and when you do have a ringing in the ear you know I think that kills some of like the I think kind of like hair that is in your ear and you because of that you do kind of lose a little bit of your hearing permanently when you have that ringing in your ear so you have to be careful with that you know like I need to purchase me some earplugs you know you know, because you do have to take measures to protect your hearing. And I didn't think you did, but obviously you do. So I wonder, is Ayumi going to be an advocate for people, for like the deaf community in Japan? All right. Next, number three. She has had an event, an event, eventful love life all right so yeah she always seen about her love life you know not so much a la Taylor Swift but still <clears throat> let's see the crooner has had a prolific dating history which includes Japanese singer actor Tomoya Nagase and backup dancer Maro she dated one of her backup dancers how you mean you do not supposed to be dating the help <clears throat> but you know, hopefully he done, you know, you know, did his job, you know. All right, hopefully it was worth it one way or the other. Let's see. Was he hurt backup dancer too? Yeah. All right, on to the next. In January 2011, she married 32-year-old Austrian actor and model Manuel Swartz. Or Swartz whom she had met the previous year on the set of the music video for her ballad, Virgin Road. They divorced a year later. Hmm. Okay, so Ayumi has a ballad called Virgin Road. I thought that was a television show. Okay, yeah, and also um, regarding that um, Austrian dude, um, Ayumi was getting a lot of, you know, hate mail basically because she was in an interracial relationship with the dude, I think, because some people were not feeling that relationship. You know, Japanese people, I guess, were not feeling that relationship that Ayumi had. I'm guessing they thought she was a sellout for dating a dude that wasn't Japanese, you know, <clears throat> dating a Westerner. And, you know, and it's strange because, you know, I guess I wonder did his people feel that way or his fans? Who knows? All right. Next, in February this of this year, I guess 2014, she married a 26-year-old American medical student. All right. So apparently, um, you know, Ayumi is just looking for love, and she is not caring about the status of these dudes since she want to marry like a backup dancer. And well, you know, data backup dancer. Um, so that's good that she is not so strong hung up on like status and money and stuff. However, I think she do need to be taking that into consideration. But then again, on the flip side, the dude is gonna become a doctor, I assume, at some point or another. So he'll at least have some money, you know. But will it be enough to support Ayumi's extravagant lifestyle, you know? I don't think so. Let's see. Number four. Before singing, she was an unsuccessful model. I didn't know that Ayumi pursued a modeling career. I thought she was pursuing an acting career at one point. 
in was she? I don't know. Let's see. The Fukuoka native began her modeling career at the early age of seven. Hmm. I didn't know. I didn't know that Ayumi had aspirations that early of being a model or being anything in the entertainment industry. Let's see, when she was fourteen, she moved to Tokyo to take on various modeling and acting jobs, but did not find much success. Oh wow. So did like she move by herself and live in like a model house or something, or did she move with like her mom and her grandmother? Let's see. Standing at one point seven meters, I'm guessing that's probably somewhere around five feet or five one or something. I don't know. Um, somewhere around that area though. Let's see. She was deemed too short by her talent agency. Hmm. Which eventually dropped her, according to the Asian music portal J Pop Asia. So, I guess in, they initially took her on as, um, no, took her on in their agency, but then dropped her because they said she was too short. But her height, I guess, maybe they, they thought she was going to grow since she was a kid, but she never grew to the height that they wanted her to grow to. Hmm. But they dropped her, you know. Mm, I guess ultimately it worked out for Ayumi. Yeah. But let's see. After ach yeah. after achieving stardom, however, she is now considered a fashion icon, glossing the covers of many fashion magazines like Vogue, Bazaar, and BB. She has also been repeatedly crowned by Oricon as the most fashionable female artist. So like really Ayumi she was able to achieve that modeling career thing to an extent. Like she she showed that talent agency like whoa like they made the wrong decision there. I tell you that. Because Ayumi is a fashion icon in Japan, definitely. <clears throat> so you know that was her best Revenge right there. That was the best revenge, and she didn't have to be nasty or underhanded to do it. There you go, Ayumi. No, that was their loss. I'll tell you that. I bet you that model agency checking for her now, though. I bet you they are now. <clears throat> All right. The last one, number five. She was also a rapper. <laughs> I knew this before um, this article, definitely. Um, I never heard any of her rapping, and I don't think I would want to, uh, at least not for the reason that I should want to. I think I would listen to it to get a laugh um, more so than to actually hear some music. <clears throat> but let's see. Hamasaki's first professional music venture was in the rap scene, according to J-Pop Asia. That is true. She released a rap album like in 96 or something, I think. Let's see. Oh, it was in December 1995. So in December of 1995, she released the album Nothing From Nothing under the Nippon Columbia label. When it failed to chart on Oricon, the label dropped her. <laughs> uh, they made the wrong decision there. I'm pretty sure they are just like, whoa, we missed out on Ayumi Hamasaki. <laughs> tell you that. They missed out on 50 million album sales. <laughs> you know. Let's see. Next, it was not until she met Japanese music producer and head of giant label Abex, Max Matsura, that she was offered the recording deal that shot her to stardom. Not the Nothing from Nothing album, rare and released before Hamasaki achieved fame, is now considered a collector's item. Yeah, I think a lot of her, you know, her stands probably will be checking for that album. But I wonder, because I think, I'm kind of surprised that, that um, the label Nippon Columbia didn't try to capitalize off of that. You know, and try to release like, oh, the, you know, Ayumi Hamasaki before the stardom type of thing. You know, look at her um, back before she became a superstar. But it looks like they have not done that. So, therefore, anyone who bought that album 
has something really special, you know, because they they hit on Ayumi from like straight up day one back in December of 1995. So yeah, they got something really awesome in their music catalog there. All right, so that's the end of the article. There you got it. There you got it. Um, so yeah, what do you guys think? Feel free to comment. Feel free to subscribe. Feel free to give me a thumbs up. Your feedback and support are extremely appreciated and extremely valued. Into the next news article analysis. Adios and goodbye for now.